I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome back aboard a whole lot of viewers on uh, Territory TV in Darwin and TAS TV in Tasmania. These one hour shows are very interesting for me. In fact, it's the first time in our 14 year, year history that we've actually produced one hour episodes and I find that it's a lot easier for us to present a, a far broader spectrum of the overall format of the show in the one hours. And it's interesting to note that around about seven or eight years ago, I approached a couple of television networks with the idea of expanding the format of the, uh, the, the show which was then called Chris Conroy's World of Boats into a general leisure and lifestyle presentation. Now, they weren't necessarily that excited about that, but I went ahead and did it, and it's proven that the show really, a show of this type really is relevant. In fact, to the extent where a whole lot of other producers around Australia are now uh, coming up with shows which have a similar format idea. Now, with that in mind, we're constantly looking for uh, subjects which cover leisure in a new and unusual way. I mean, uh, we cover everything from cooking, through medicine, through innovations and inventions, through of course the normal things which have, are aviation, uh, boating, which will always be the cornerstone of the show, and tourism and travel, as well as other subjects as they come along, motoring and that sort of thing. I'm particularly interested, interested in hearing about innovations and inventions. Now, it doesn't matter what area they, they uh, are relevant to, whether it be industry, technology, medicine, or whatever, I'd be very interested in hearing uh, about people who have that sort of thing that they would like seen, and that they, the, the in, invention should be at a stage of development where it's pretty well ready for the market. And I would also like, particularly in the Territory, to look at some barra fishing and, uh, and some wilderness uh, subjects such as that. That would be particularly interesting, not only for us, but of course for our viewers. And one of the reasons that I say that is that we've just received confirmation that we'll be going to air in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates with a regular show every week. And of course that show can be used to promote and feature Australian tourist attractions, Australian manufactured goods and Australian services to one of the most wealthy markets in the, in the whole world. So if you have a product that you would like shown in that context, both in Australia and overseas, we would certainly like to hear from you. Now, I mentioned tourism before. Uh, the feature that you're about to see is one we shot three or four years ago on the Northern Rivers area of uh, New South Wales. Now, it had been possible to get further away from both Tasmania and Darwin and remain on the east coast than, than the actual Northern Rivers area of New South Wales. The Clarence River uh, hits the sea at Yamba and runs past Grafton and from that area north to the border is one of the most beautiful areas in Australia. So we're going to take you on a little tour of that, show you some of its attractions and show you how beautiful it is. The Clarence, like most truly great rivers, seems to live all the moods of a long life as he makes his way from his birthplace in the remote mountains to the sea. He starts out childlike, laughing and playing over rocks and down waterfalls, tests the strength of young adulthood in wild rapids, and finally spreads out to meander slowly through a green and beautiful countryside. It was natural for the early settlers to build their towns and villages along the banks of this great river. The first attraction was the red cedar, growing in profusion in the valley and rainforests. In those days, the river was the only means of transporting the red gold logs to the sawmills in Newcastle and Sydney, and so it remained for many years with small steamships, romantic but hazardous, plying their trade up and down the treacherous New South Wales coast. As the valley was cleared, agriculture took over. The Clarence Valley is the southern gateway to the 2,000 kilometre sweep of coastal plain which reaches north to Cairns and supplies our nation with a sugar. It's been said that the islands of the Clarence are sugar coated and the mills dotted along the river come to spectacular life each year processing the white gold. The river plain nurtures other forms of agriculture too. Fat dairy and beef cattle stand knee deep in the lush grass whilst horse studs breed some of the nation's finest thoroughbred racehorses and poplar groves supply us with some of our best furniture and boat building timber. The mood of the river is reflected in her people and through them her architecture. Grafton is a city of fine old buildings. Beautifully preserved and maintained, these relics of a gentler age still serve well 
as government offices, community centres and private homes. In spite of a stately appearance, Grafton is a modern city. The centre of trade and commerce for the valley, she attracts tourists from all over the world each October for the Jacaranda Festival. The city seems to cover herself with a cloak of lavender as these beautiful trees, which by the way, originated in the jungles of the Amazon, burst into riotous bloom. The celebrations last for a full week and include such attractions as a street parade and the bridge to bridge ski race. The seasons blend gently in this subtropical climate and the Clarence Valley offers visitors a delightful year-round mild summer. Attractions abound and include the amazing Merino Max Australian Agrodrome with its live sheep stage show and demonstration of the skills of the sheepdog. Right round the Earth's equator. Now that will give you just some idea as to why Australia is very often internationally referred to as the land of the Golden Fleece. To the west, the spectacular ramparts of the Gibraltar Ranges with their national parks offer the bushwalker and camper breathtaking scenery and a chance to get to know some of the locals. Grafton is a sportsman's paradise and the hills to the west of town offer a perfect venue for gliding. The southern bank of the river, along which runs the Pacific Highway, is dotted with small towns. Almara is typical of these sleepy fishing and farming settlements, but it came alive recently when it was chosen as the location for the TV series Fields of Fire, a drama set in the early days of sugarcane farming. McLean has been called the Scottish town in Australia and each year sees a Highland festival with a pipe band competition and a street parade which involves everyone from the kids to grandpa. The twin towns of Iluka and Yamba, linked by a quaint ferry service, see Old Man Clarence on his way to the sea. Located on either side of the entrance, they're home to the deep sea trawler fleet. The Clarence is one of the largest seafood producing areas on the east coast, and fleets of river trawlers are based at McLean, as well as at Yamba and Iluka. Dick Gorman and his family run a seafood restaurant at Yamba, and I asked Dick about his oyster growing activities on the river. Dick, everywhere I go from Marimbula right through the Georges River and uh, the Hawkesbury River all the way up to here, the oyster growers all tell me that the oysters from their river are the best oysters in the world. You're going to tell me the same thing, aren't you? No, I'm going to tell you they're all wrong. <laughs> the, right. best, the best oysters are the oysters that grow on the north coast. Right. Wa water's warmer, they grow all the year round. Right. And they're bigger, and they're fatter, and they're better. And they're more, they're, they're tasty. You try one. All right, okay, all right. Well, you've been growing them here for many years. That is delicious. I know you shouldn't talk with your mouth full. But <laughs> you tell me that you're supplying spat to places, places all, over the, all over the country from here. We send a lot of spat down the south coast from the Billingen River mm. uh, under the new system uh, of oyster growing and to prevent the spread of Pacific oysters. Mm. Spat production has changed. Now little spat is sold when it's Oh, about as big as a one cent piece. Mm -hmm. We send about 30,000 little oysters down to places like Marimbula, 
in a one foam box. Yamba, home to a huge annual family fishing festival held in July, is surrounded by national parks. Yura Gear extends some 90 kilometres to the south and offers all-weather access for vehicles, including coaches. The beach at Angauri offers superb surfing and the Blue Pool, an abandoned quarry, is a great place for the kids. The old days are gone. No longer must visitors to the Clarence endure a hazardous ocean passage to reach the area. The XPT runs a fast and comfortable rail service from Sydney. The area is well serviced by airlines and tourist and travel coaches bring people in from all over the country. The Richmond River enters the sea right here at Ballina. Now it's one of those beautiful little sleepy seaside ports which offers an enormous amount for either the casual visitor or the holiday maker. Just offshore is some of New South Wales' very best fishing. There are a lot of reefs offshore and trawlers operate out of, uh, out of Ballina here on a regular basis, supplying the whole northeast corner of New South Wales and also Queensland with its fish. Sugarcane is grown inland as well as beef cattle. And on the highlands, on the escarpment just behind Ballina, is Lismore and the start of the fascinating macadamia plantations. Now we're going to show, show you all of that. But Ballina is also unusual in having one of Australia's very few viable and operating aircraft manufacturing facilities. Howard Hughes designed this little two-seat ultralight called the Lightwing about two and a half years ago here in Ballina. He's got about two years of production booked up and sold and it's one of the most successful aircraft ever designed and built in Australia. Now Howard and I, Howard has very kindly lent me the Lightwing and Monty and I are about to show you Ballina from the air. There can be no doubt that Ballina is a growing city. The Ballina Keys Estate, shopping town and marina complex is providing hundreds of new homes for those who have realised that there is a better way of life than that offered by the cities. The Richmond River abounds with fish and the coast is renowned for its beautiful beaches. The escarpment reaches toward the coast here and just to the west of Ballina one climbs into one of the most beautiful regions in Australia. The plateaus are tapestry of macadamia groves interspersed with mango and avocado plantations. The Summerland House with no steps at Alstonville looks after packaging and distribution of a wide variety of tropical fruits including avocados and offers visitors the opportunity to see an automated grading and packing machine at work. The tea rooms and gardens make lunch a delightful experience. A macadamia processing plant at Alphadale between Alstonville and Lismore enchants visitors whilst it prepares these delicious nuts for the world market. The short drive from the coast to Lismore shows off the beauty of the countryside. Gently rolling hills with quiet crystal streams and lush grass, the symmetry of the lines of macadamia trees looking from the air for all the world like a green quilted chenille bedspread covering the pillowed countryside. Lismore nestles by the Richmond in a huge lush bowl. A bustling community, it too carries strong echoes of the past in its beautiful cathedrals and old buildings. Casino, just to the west of Lismore, is the main rail and jet air terminus for the area, whilst to the north, the Nightcap Range rises abruptly from the valley floor with spectacular waterfalls, among them the beautiful Minion Falls, carving silver arcs in the sky. The townships of Nimbin and Kyogle nestle here, providing a focal point for the farming communities dotted through the hills. Look to the east from the escarpment at dusk and you'll see the beacon of the Byron Bay Lights spear its guiding beam to the sea.
Australia's easternmost point, Cape Byron, attracts fishermen, tourists and scuba divers all year round. It's home to a colony of goats who entertain visitors and the township is also home to a thriving surfboard and cottage industry. When the wind's right, hang gliders can be seen wheeling like giant butterflies above the Cape. If you care to make the long climb to the summit of Mount Warning before dawn, you'll be the first person in Australia to see the sun. This imposing peak dominates the Tweed Valley and the exertion of the climb is quickly forgotten as you survey the river which forms the New South Wales-Queensland border to the east and the craggy peaks of the McPherson, Tweed and Richmond ranges to the west. The drive from Ballina takes you through such towns as Tiagra, Bangalow, Mooble, Burringbar, Mullumbimby and Brunswick Heads until you finally wind down from the ranges into Mwoolumbar. The motor rail which carries passengers and their cars from Sydney and Newcastle terminates here and it's the gateway to one of the finest holiday areas in the state. The Tweed area offers a huge variety of attractions for the visitor. The snowy beaches sweep south to Kingscliff, home of an annual surf carnival. The river itself offers magnificent fishing and cruising, and the surrounding countryside contrasts from cane fields along the south bank to mountains in the north. Tweed heads bustles with activity year round and is the gateway to the Gold Coast. In many ways, it has more to offer. The tinsel and glitter is replaced by something more substantial. Licensed clubs such as Twin Towns, Terranora Country Club, Seagulls and the Golf Club, among the largest and most palatial clubs in the state, offer members and visitors fine food, poker machines by the hundred and the very best in Australian and overseas entertainers. Here you can play golf, tennis, bowls, in fact enjoy almost any sport you can think of year round in the superb climate. To the south of the Tweed entrance, Virgin Beach sweeps as far as the eye can see and here can be found some of the best reef fishing and diving anywhere. The twin towns of Tweed Heads and Coolangatta straddle the border. The airport just to the north offers easy access from any part of the country, the shopping's great and accommodation of all kinds from caravan parks and holiday flats right up to international standard hotels can be found. Well, that wraps us for another week, but before I go, I mentioned earlier in the show that we'd like to hear from people who have uh, various aspects of leisure, products, services, manufactured good tourist attractions that they would like seen on the show. Um, what you've just seen is fairly typical of that, and we specialise in producing that type of production uh, to, for showing on the show and also for use by those areas uh, for their ongoing promotion. In fact, the Clarence Richmond Tweed area used over 500 copies of that tape to distribute all over the country and it was significant in pulling a large number of tourists into the area so if you're a tourist officer or if you have an area that you believe uh, would be relevant on the show we'd certainly like to hear from you that wraps us for another week we'll see you next week with another show in the meantime take care and safe baiting <laughs>